Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles. I'm out here with my new camera and my new microphone, just doing a little bit of a test today. So I hope you guys like this video. We're just going to be taking a little bit of a walk through a local park, and I'm just going to be showing you guys some close-ups of different plants and mushrooms that I see, like these fancy mushrooms you can see here, which were actually in my last vlog as well, so I'm not going to be showing you too much of them. If you guys look right down there, you can see where I filmed my video, 10 Medicinal Plants in a Lowland Environment, and you can see just how soggy that is. That is absolutely filled with water. Just a few months ago, there was no water there, and now you can see it is completely filled with water. That's how much rain we've had in just the past couple weeks. It's been an absurd amount of rain. So that's part of the reason why I also haven't done too many videos, is just because it's been way too rainy recently. Now here's a plant that you guys are looking at. It's called Windflower or Rue Anemone. Now I know that may sound weird for the name of this plant to be Anemone because it grows on land and not in the ocean. However, that is the name of this plant. It generally has a white flower. However, you can see it's a little too early for its flower right now. This is one of the earliest flowering plants that we have here in the eastern woodlands and its flower typically emerges generally anywhere between March through April. Some of the other plants that flower along with this are garlic mustard, Dutchman's breeches, and the spring beauty. So whenever you see some of those flowers, you know that you can find this plant. Now I'm not aware of the uses of this plant because I personally haven't had to use it yet. And if I look right behind me, I can see just a few more of these. One of the easiest ways to distinguish whether you have wind flower or not is just because of these very distinct leaves. You can see that these leaves are kind of inversely ovate. They have a very sharp point at the back where they connect to the petiole, and on the very front they have these three distinct rounded lobes. Now these rounded lobes can have a lot of variation in shape as you can see on just this one plant. If I move some of the leaves that are on the ground, you can see that there are actually three sets of leaves that come out of the stem. You can see these two opposite leaves and you can see this one growing right here out of the base. So that's just another one of the ways to tell whether you have windflower or ruin anemone is just by looking at the distinct shape of these leaves and the growth pattern of these leaves. Some other plants that I see in the area are violet. You can see this vi very distinct violet leaf here. Now violets have a very unique heart shape to them. They look very, very much like a heart. And you can also see that the veins of the leaves all run outward and they radiate outward from the center vein. And here you may be able to see these distinct radiating veins as they radiate outwards from the center point on the violet leaf. Now here you can get a really good idea of the type of environment that rue anemone likes to grow. It really loves these low bottomlands as you can see here. It's really low, it's really moist, you can see moss covering that tree directly in front of us now. So basically anywhere in moist woodlands during the very early spring, now it is technically winter here, but the temperature right now is almost 60 degrees. So a lot of the plants are thinking that spring is here and it's time for them to grow. And if we look right back over here, we can actually see one of the very distinct mottled leaves of Virginia water leaf. And this is another plant that really loves these low moist woodlands, especially on the edges of hills where it receives a lot of runnage and drain off. As you guys may be able to see, right up there is a huge hill, so there's a lot of water that comes down this hill, and that's what allows this water leaf to grow here with its very unique white mots or mottles all across the leaf, of you, as you can see here. This is a very, very good example of these leaves. Now this plant does have a flower, it is just way too early for it to have its flower, but whenever you see its flower, it's going to be kind of a creamy purple color. And then right behind it, we can actually see some very young garlic mustard leaves coming in here. These are some very nice and tender looking garlic mustard leaves. These would be extremely delicious added to a salad. Can you guys see all that garlic mustard there growing under the water? It's actually growing underwater. We've had so much rain. As you can see, this area is completely 
flooded. Thank goodness there's a bridge here because they know in this park that this place floods very bad down here. But you can see just all of this water. If we look very closely in the water, we can actually see some garlic mustard still growing, surprisingly enough. This is really cool to see. Now here you guys can see the trail that I'm on. You can see this very long, steep hill. You can see how it goes down. There's actually a trail that juts off to the left. And that trail that juts off to the left goes right over there where the center of the frame is. And that's right where we just were. So you can see this big hill that I've gone up. And if we look right up there, you can actually see how much higher this hill actually goes. This is a huge hill. It's one of the biggest hills that I have available near my house. So that pretty much concludes this short little video. I thank you guys for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned just a little bit of something. I know it wasn't terribly informative, but I am just testing out my new camera and microphone. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video quality, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Stay tuned.